We're in conversation this morning with Arvind Sethi of Tata Asset Management. Arvind, good morning. Good morning. All right, what we're tracking today, of course, is a kind of selling we're seeing uh, in global markets. Uh, not a wonderful uh, screen to wake up to. Uh, but what are you making of it? Does it worry you at all? Are we at this point, uh, you know, really in sync with what we're seeing globally? Or do you feel that we're decoupled and we're following our own trajectory? I think you'd have to be brave to say we were decoupled. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, I think one of the themes with which we have been emphasizing is that globally there's a deflate, we're in a deflationary environment. Uh, it's only here that we have a problem with inflation. And I think finally now the market is waking up to that because we've already seen the ECB come in with more QE measures. Japan has already been working at it. China is definitely their numbers are quite suspect. And now suddenly the last retail sales number even in the U.S. is maybe giving people a feeling that perhaps even U.S. Growth, growth may not be sustainable at those 3% levels. So I think uh, the environment is one of deflation. There is no inflation in mo most developed countries. Uh, so I think the tendency will be to keep rates low. So you feel the euphoria is dying down and people are now coming to terms with reality? Yes, and uh, while, you know, for India, that's in a sense a good thing to some extent because commodity prices go down, oil prices go down, so we benefit. But don't forget that we're a, we a country with a structurally a current account deficit, and if we're going to grow, we do need at least a healthy, some health in the global environment so we can export and pay for that growth. Uh, so uh, overall, I think India is better off in relative terms. But let's see the extent to which the market, uh, uh, the real economies there are reflecting what is the, mar the market is. You know, so th that really is going to be important because when we talk about on one side the kind of global route that we're seeing, th does India also, because, you know, face that kind of concern? Because as you were mentioning, on one side there's been this little bit of euphoria around India. We've been talking about the fundamentals improving, recent bit of macro data also has been a little supportive. But can it actually stand alone, you know, when you have this kind of a crack coming in across global equity markets? Not in the short term. So I think, actually I'm surprised to see the numbers down. I thought that given the Maharashtra election, or at least what the exit polls are mm. saying, that we would have actually been moving up. Yeah. But uh, perhaps we'll pull our way back. I think in the short term, even India's still on hope, right? And we know that the global economy, their equity markets were all up because of low interest rates. And there's been, for some time, a lot of serious analysts saying that uh, the Dow and all this at, 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 uh, at levels which are only seen six times in a century, yeah. right? So, so some correction is inevitable. So I think even we should follow that. But we do have a great, I would say, historical opportunity to decouple and move away if we can then really show some reform on the ground because here is a country which is large it's got the demographics in its favor and you know growth should not be a problem i want to pick up on that election point and the, and the reform agenda a lot of people were waiting for these elections to pass them by and say that the government will finally start acting in the pace that the market was hoping for uh, given what we've seen off the exit polls are you hopeful that the, the easy reforms will be coming up now, like the diesel deregulation, there's gas price, and there's a lot of divestment bunched up as well, Arvind. Do you think the government is going to pick up pace from this point? Well, I, I'm just hoping that, you know, once on the 19th, the final results are known. Uh, well, irrespective of whether they're known, the fact is I think now this election is over. I don't think there are any major state elections for another year. Mm -hmm. And I think now could be the time when the government moves on a few fronts. I think diesel and all these are minor things because the pricing right now is, but you and know, I think... Coal? Will coal be the... the yeah, the what is decision? going to be the fate of these cancelled coal block auctions, fate of some of the projects which are blocked. And I think at some level we need something a little more structural mm. uh, because, you know, you cannot run the country from the finance ministry or the ministry okay. of industry, you know. So I think uh, whether there'll be some bigger step to do something on the labor market front, mm. uh, maybe something more positive on the GST side. Uh, so I, th I think the market will... I think next month is very important for the market because I think Mr. Modi has been given time. I think market like to see some, some real things too. Do you see more money uh, coming into the markets, particularly if the Fed does move uh, soon? Uh, look, if the Fed moves, of course, it's looking less likely right now. If the Fed moves, as I said, I think there will be that little move away. Uh, but it is one of those well-discounted events. So while that will lend itself to some volatility in the near term, I don't see uh, a huge sort of withdrawal from India. 
Yeah, before we take that break, I want to get a quick mention out here. Since we're talking about the broader outlook for the markets itself, for most part of this year, the Indian markets really have been a buy on day market and we've seen that take place, we've seen that consistently as a strategy from a whole host of strategists. If we're seeing this kind of correction, if we're seeing this kind of a route, would you advise investors to go ahead and buy India? See, my advice to investors has always been that you should keep investing uh, systematically into your plan. We're still very bullish on the long term. But of course, if this correction could take us to say 7200 or that I think is technically an important level, okay. Uh, I think one should wait to see it, but I, th I think it's still a buy on dips. Though, as we've been saying time and again, the real economy will take time to recover, and we are seeing that in the latest industrial production number. I think the real pickup will be about a year from now.